What's up, Lester students? This is Isaiah, one of your next gen interns. First of all, what I need you to do is subscribe to this channel so you never miss anything we post. You can follow us on social media at Westover Students on Instagram and at Westover Next Gen on Snapchat and TikTok. Also, feel free to follow us on Facebook at Westover Students. And now it's time for our For Your Entertainment segment where we find funny videos on social media for you to watch. Enjoy. for TikTok. I mean, thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning, starting me on my way. Now it's time for TikTok. Hope you enjoyed those videos, guys. I know I did. If you didn't already know, we have a new worship video up. You can click right here in this corner or go to the link in the description to watch. Real quick, we have a challenge for you guys. Last week, we hid Tori's face in the sermon. This is where it was. God is not out to destroy your love life. Gloria Eve on Instagram was the one to find Tori's face last week. So this week, her face is going to be hidden. When you find her face, be sure to post it on your story, tag at Westover students, and use the hashtag find the student for a chance for your face to be hidden in next week's sermon. And now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Hello there, I'm Pastor Tito, and we're in a series all about love, dating, and relationships. It's called Online Dating. Now you may be wondering, what do I do on a date? Or how do I dump Mr. Wrong? Those are all phenomenal questions. But before we get there, I think we need to start here. Last week we said, God is not out to destroy your love life. God just doesn't want your love life to destroy you. And if you want to catch up on this sermon series, feel free to click on this playlist or click on the link in the description. Now let's be honest, there are a lot of myths out there about dating. We already talked about myth number one, the right person myth. That one says that if you find the right person, then magically everything's gonna be all right, right? False. This week we're talking about myth number two. We call this the promise myth. And the promise myth says that a promise replaces the need for preparation. That all you need is a promise and a party. That's right, you throw the party, the soiree, the wedding of the century. You and your bride-to-be have put together the perfect guest list. You've made sure to invite Amazon and Target, and then finally the moment comes at the party that you deliver the promise, the I do, the commitment that you're gonna be the perfect husband and that she's gonna be the perfect wife. And then poof, like the genie from Aladdin, all your prayers are answered and you magically become the perfect marriage and you live happily ever after. It sounds wonderful, right? But it's not a new statistic that half of these fairy tale weddings end in horror movie like divorce, even for Christians. And it's so sad that for many of us, we come from broken homes. And here's what I've learned and what you've learned over the years, that promises are no substitute for preparation. And we tend to apply this in every area of our lives other than relationships. In academics, you know that you can't promise yourself into a degree. You have to study. Dear Mr. Principal, I promise I'll make a great doctor. And if you'll just give me the degree, I'm not going to study, I'm not going to do clinicals, I'm not even going to take the MCATs, but I just know I'll be the best doctor if you give me the diploma. And for those of you who are athletes and musicians or skilled gamers, you know that you can be born with a certain amount of talent, a certain amount of skill, but you have to work and you have to practice to cultivate that talent. You don't win championships with promises, you win them with practice. You don't win competitions with promises, you win them with practice. But here's the sad truth. I do does not equal I can. And you've seen it hundreds of times. Failed relationship after relationship, failed marriage after failed marriage. And maybe they got three years into their marriage, maybe they got 20 years into their marriage, but they were still so immature. They still had issues and habits that they had not dealt with. Their vows were beautiful, but they weren't enough. And saying I do doesn't make you capable, it only makes you accountable. When you say I do, it's putting it out there for everybody to know, for everybody to hear it. Everybody knows where you stand. It's like when you're going on a diet and you make the mistake of telling everybody you're going on a diet. So the second you sneak in that Chick-fil-A waffle fry, they are on you like white on rice. But the scary thing is this, 
If you're accountable, but not capable, you'll end up miserable. It's like, you know what you're supposed to do, but you have no idea how you're supposed to do it. Nobody's ever taught you how to make a relationship work. No one ever taught you how to live happily ever after. And if you aren't preparing now for marriage, you won't be prepared then to stay married. And this is where following Jesus can and will make your life better. I'm not saying you won't ever have problems. I'm not saying you'll never be sad again. I mean, that's just a straight up lie. I wish I could say that, but it's just not true. But what I am saying is that following Jesus can and will make your life better. And it'll make you better at life. And here's the thing, when I say following Jesus, I mean really following Jesus. Not just saying, hey, I'm a follower of Jesus now, but you're still acting the way you used to act. You're still treating people the way you used to treat people. But I mean really giving him everything following him, getting to know him, spending time with him, not just becoming some mindless rule follower that just judges everybody. But like this, listen to how Jesus said this to his disciples. This was during his last hang before he would be arrested and put on trial. John 15 verse one, he says, I am the true vine and my father, he's the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it'll be even more fruitful. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. See here, Jesus is talking about relationship. He's saying, unless you stay close to me, unless I'm in you, and unless you are in me, then you're not going to bear fruit. You're not going to accomplish the things that God wants you to accomplish. You see, following Jesus is simple and compelling, but it can also be demanding and rewarding. But listen how Jesus sums this up in John 15, 12. He says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. But how has God loved us? What has God done for us? Well, he sent his own son, Jesus, to live a perfect life on the earth. He came as a baby and he grew up and he gave us an example of how to live. And if that weren't enough, Jesus went so far to die on a cross for all of our sins, for all of our mistakes. Before we loved him, before we were his friends, before we were his followers, he died for us while we were his enemies. And even as he was hanging on the cross, finally these words, to love each other as I have loved you, finally made sense to his disciples because they saw Jesus even hanging there, forgiving people as they were cussing at him, as they were making fun of him, as they were laughing at him. Jesus did all that for us. Friends, if you will love each other as Jesus loved you, that's how you become a better boyfriend, a better girlfriend, a better person, a better son, a better daughter, a better future husband, a better future wife, all those things. This is how you become the person, the person you're looking for is looking for. When you regularly spend time with Jesus, memorizing his words, going to him in prayer, and then applying his word to your situations, you cannot not be changed. You see, the next part is up to you. Jesus already did the hard part. He came, he lived a perfect, sinless life to give us an example, and then he died for us. He died for our sins, he died for our shame, he died for our guilt, so that you don't have to walk around with that on your shoulders anymore. And then when he came back to life, he sent the Holy Spirit to give us the power to live victorious lives that we no longer have to be in chains to all the mistakes that we've made in our past but it's up to you to put him in the center of your life. And if you'll allow him, he can make you into the kind of person the person you're looking for is looking for. And next week, we're gonna really spend some time here on how do we practically live this out. But it starts with following Jesus. Let me tell you a story I heard from a pastor out in Georgia. He tells a story of this young lady she was a middle schooler and a high schooler, and she loved the Lord. She went to church all the time. She did all the youth group stuff. She'd go home and read her Bible and pray, and she had really great Christian friends. She eventually goes off to college, and in college, she kind of changes. She hangs out with a different crowd. She begins drinking, she begins partying, and she even begins sleeping around. I mean, she's completely different than her middle school or high school self. Now, fast forward, she's home on winter break and she's having a conversation with her mom. And she says, mom, I met this guy 
and he's amazing and he's so sweet and he's so nice and he treats all the women around us with respect and he really, really loves God. And mom's listening and listening and as her daughter talks more and more, she begins having tears in her eyes. And the daughter stops and she says, mom, what is it? And her mom looks at her and says, honey, the problem is a guy like that, he isn't looking for a girl like you. And in that moment, that young lady, she begins to cry. And she just breaks down and she falls on the floor, just weeping uncontrollably. Because in that moment, she realized her whole life, she'd been looking for Mr. Right instead of becoming the right person. Friends, hear me when I say this. We have an opportunity to become the person, the person we're looking for is looking for. And it doesn't take you becoming this good person. It starts with you connecting with Jesus. It starts with you having a relationship with God, staying connected to the vine and not separating, no matter how hard things get, no matter how bad things get, but you staying close to Jesus. Man, I would love to pray for you if you'd bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, God, we trust you. God, you know that there are people watching right now that they want to become the person, the person they're looking for is looking for, but they just feel so far away from you. And God, we're not judging. God, we're not making fun of them. We're not laughing at them. God, this is an opportunity for them to meet you. And friends, listen, if you're listening and you've never given your life to Jesus, I'd love for you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I'm lost without you. I've made mistakes. I've done stuff I'm not proud of, but I believe that you sent Jesus to die for me, that he died in my place so I don't have to live with that guilt or live with that shame. And he came back to life so that I could win, so that he could give me the power I need to conquer these sins. Please forgive me. I give you all my heart. I give you all my life. I wanna follow you. I want to stay connected to the vine and I want to become the kind of person, the person I'm looking for is looking for. In Jesus name, amen, amen. Friends, you guys are so awesome. We're so thrilled that you tuned in with us this week and we would love for you to check out our worship service. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the sermon. Remember, we have a new worship song, so be sure to check that out. Also, remember, once you find the face, take a picture, post it to your Instagram and use the hashtag findthestudents. That's it for today, guys. See ya. <laughs>